Good afternoon, everybody. So, this is a uh, part one of uh, how to successfully take a fitters test. You may be asked to take a test anytime you go out for a job as a fitter or a fabricator, whether it be pipe, structural, or otherwise. So, these are some some pretty common questions you might have to ask or be asked. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started. So. Question one is explain the 345 method and how is it used. Um, the 345 is three foot, four foot, five foot. So you've got two uh, structural steel members. One is in the vertical position, the other is in the horizontal position. And you'll take a three foot marker on the vertical beam, four foot marker on the horizontal beam. And basically you're making a triangle and if the two beams are 90 degrees or perpendicular to one another, then you should have five foot in between them. And that's pretty basic on, on, on structural steel fabrication. Uh, question number two is, how would you tune a two foot framing square and why? Well, when you uh, pick up a square that you haven't worked with in a while, and especially if it's been dropped, you may want to check it. So we call this tuning the square basically it means that you're just checking to make sure that it's true uh, what size cutting tip would you use to cut a two inch steel plate uh, the general question or the answer I should say is a four inch or number four tip if you're using a you know oxycetylene cutting torch um, but it actually depends on um, type of steel the grade of steel makes a difference they all cut a little bit different um, and of course, everyone uses settings differently too. What does PSI mean? Is pounds per square inch. What does the eight and eight by 18 mean? So a W eight by 18 is referring to a structural steel beam. Okay. So that would be 18 pounds per square foot or per foot, I should say. And then this W eight is talking about a wide flange or an I beam in particular. And the 8 inches is talking about the width of the web of the I-beam. Name three basic hand tools. Three-pound sledgehammer should be in everyone's toolbox. 25-foot tape measure um, and a two-foot level. When is never seize used? Never seize is basically a lubricant that we use for bolts to protect the threads from corrosion. Uh, what is the formula to determine wrench size for a heavy hex bolt if the stud diameter is three quarter inches? Uh, the three quarters really isn't that important, but the formula is 1.5 plus an eighth. So you would simply take this number, whatever this, this the diameter of the stud that you're using, the bolt itself, and you would multiply 1.5 and then add an eighth. In this case, it would be an inch and a quarter. Uh, what is uh, 625 in fraction form that would be 5 eighths of an inch okay so that's talking about so how to how would you convert a decimal into a fraction so 625 is um, 5 eighths of an inch what is 13 millimeters in inches oh, that would be about a half an inch what is 3 eighths inches in decimal form that's about 0.375 uh, what is one inch in metric form? It's about 25 millimeters. Uh, what does SMAW mean? So this is about welding knowledge, so that's stick metal arc welding. So it's talking about stick welding. Uh, what are the settings for using a 1 8 diameter coated electrode? So this is talking about like if you're using a 7018 electrode. Uh, settings, if you're welding in DC positive, uh, then it would be about 125 amps would be the answer. Uh, that's pretty pretty common. What does the 70 in 7014 mean? So 7014 is a low hydrogen rod, and the 70 is talking about 70,000 pounds per square inch. So it's talking about the tensile strength of the rod itself, the welding rod. Name two low hydrogen coated electrodes. Um, the 7014 obviously is one example, and the other one it would be a 6011. Uh, what is the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle if one side measures 48 inches and the adjacent side measures 36 inches? Well, uh, 48 inches is uh, 4 foot, 36 inches is 3 foot, so if we got 4 foot, like I said on the horizontal side, 
And if we're doing 36 inches on the vertical side, on the adjacent side, then our hypotenuse should be 5 foot or 60 inches. Uh, what is the total circumference of a circle that measures 12 inches? So the formula for finding the circumference of any circle, regardless of diameter, is you take the diameter, which is in this case is 12, and you multiply by pi, which is point, well, which is a 3.14. So let's see here. So we got 12 inches times 3.14. And there you go, 37 inches and 11 sixteenths. Um, how much would a C8 by 11.5 that measures three foot weigh? So uh, the C8 is talking about a piece of channel iron. 11.5 uh, is 11.5 pounds per foot. So we simply multiply that by 3 times 3. That would be 34.5 on that one. These are our math questions. So I believe it's asking us so 22 feet five inches and three eighths and then we're adding adding seven feet one inch and seven eighths so it's 29 feet seven inches and a quarter nine feet four inches and a half and we're minus two feet zero inches and 13 sixteenths that gives us seven feet three inches and 11 sixteenths then we got 14 feet three inches and seven sixteenths minus nine feet six inches and a quarter that gives us four foot nine and three sixteenths. And then we got just six inches and three sixteenths plus that's ten inches and five sixteenths. So that comes out to be about one foot four and a half. Then it asks us, uh, divide 11 feet, 11 feet, 5 inches, and 3 quarters in half. So that would be 5 foot 8 and 7 eighths. So question 24 is talking about like if you're measuring a piece of steel and you need to find the center of that steel, that's kind of what that exercise is talking about. So what is the cutback of a four by four by half angle if the degree of cut is or equal to 22.5? So uh, four by four by half angle, I'm talking about angle iron, the cutback is basically the, to the, the total distance of material that you'd have to remove to make the degree of cut. Um, so 22.5 is half of 45. So if it's a four inch leg, and you're not cutting on a 45, so 45 is, you know, 4 of a 4. So if it's 22 and a half, it's half of that. So your cutback would be 2 inches. Uh, so that's basically what you do on how to successfully pass a fitter's test. Uh, please like and subscribe and follow for part 2. See you next time, guys.